Hey guys, Andre here, Horizon City News. There's a video I wanted to show you here from Eyes of, or Eyes on the State. Um, I've gotten more and more into watching this channel because uh, the algorithm keeps giving me his videos, but I've been watching them over the years, but um, not as much as, as I have recently. And um, it's a good thing because there's a video he just put out that deals with um, war warrantless entries into homes by the police under emergency circumstances. So the video you're about to watch is a man that's uh, very distressed. He's under emotional distress and he's uh, very intoxicated. Um, I'm assuming just on alcohol, but maybe on some other drug, but he's definitely not sober. Um, and like I said, he's very emotionally distressed. Like uh, you'll see in the video, he's his mind is just spinning with all sorts of issues. And uh, the police keep trying to speak to him. And uh, he's not making very much sense. You'll see on the video. Um, long story short, the police forced their way into this man's home. And uh, so it's a warrantless entry into the home. But, um, and I'm not even trying to pretend to be a lawyer, but I think that it's legal what happened. Even though a lot of people might not agree and they might not like what they're about to see in this video. Um, you know, there's something called exigency. The police are allowed under certain, certain, certain circumstances to not get a warrant from a judge even if it's the home, which is supposed to be, you know, the um, most protected place regarding the Fourth Amendment. It's supposed to be homes, apartments, any place a person lives. Um, but if there's an exigency, like someone's screaming for help, or they think someone's about to kill themselves, or maybe there's uh, some sort of evidence inside that they think will be destroyed if they don't get in right then, right there, you know, there's different ways that they're allowed to get around the warrant requirement of the Fourth Amendment. So that's what we're about to watch in this video here. And uh, this video is mirrored from Eyes on the State. So make sure that you uh, subscribe to him. And the original video is from an individual who had apparently one subscriber. And uh, the original video... When I tried to go to that channel and look at the original video, uh, it's been taken down for some reason. I don't know why. But uh, <clears throat> Eyes in the State had it, so I'm copying it, putting it on my channel. Um, I figured that a lot of my viewers would be interested in it. And like I said, uh, make sure you go to Eyes in the State and check out his other videos. And, uh, you know, subscribe to him. And um, whatever you think about his video here on my channel, just Put your uh, comments in the description box below. And, uh, yeah, that's what uh, the Fourth Amendment is. It's not all about, you know, rock-solid, bright-line rules. There's, there's, uh, it's all about reasonableness. So in certain situations, the police are allowed to break inside if they can articulate ex exigency. And that's what's happening here is in this video. Apparently, the police thought there was exigency. that The man inside the home was about to kill himself. So here's the video. You can decide for yourself. And uh, it happened in the state of Minnesota. All right, guys. Talk to you later. Have a good night. Bye. And then back to the speech again, February 24th, 1761. This is one that I think most of you will recognize. He says, now one of the most essential branches of English liberty is the freedom of one's house. A man's house is his castle. And whilst he is quiet, he is as well guarded as a prince in his castle. All right, you guys, I'm back with another one. You've got to see the excuses that cops use to violate the Fourth Amendment of people. Here's a classic one right here, posted 23 hours ago by Josh 
Allen. Make sure you guys go over and let him know that I sent you. Hit that subscribe button. Hit that share. Hit that like. Let me know what you think in the comments below about this quote well check. So there's some people pounding on my door. I have no idea what they're here for. Police department, hey! What are you here for? Come on here. What are you here for? Come here. What are you here for? Are you here alone? Why yeah. Why open the door? Because I'm here by myself. Okay. Are you just drinking or what's going on? I'm here by myself. Right. But you didn't hear us knocking? Okay. Just woke did you, up. Did you send out some messages? Here. No. Let's not have any more of that. Let's not have any more of those. What's going on here? Well, we're coming over here to check on you. I'm okay. Okay, we were told that you were slitting your wrists and hanging yourself. No. Your sister okay. told us that. What sister? Your sister? I don't know what sister. I'm okay. Okay. I'm just I'm sitting here relaxing. Okay. Well, why, why would she tell us that? I have no idea. Did you tell her that? No, I'm drinking Coca-Cola. Right. Okay, that's fine. So you weren't talking to her about no. killing yourself? No. Or hanging yourself? No. Or slitting your wrist? No. No. Don't feel that way. What's that? Do not feel that way. You don't feel that way. No. And you just took my beverage without any indication whatsoever. Can I get your names? What, what do you mean without an indication? Schroeder. Yep, Steve. Don't and anything else. Okay. You like to mess with people with disabilities and any intellectual challenges, and you like to mess with people who have a difference than your own perspective of whiteness, right? I don't know what it is. Yeah, you do. We're we're coming over here because people were concerned about you saying that people are concerned out, about me. Wow, people are concerned about me. me. Hold on, let me. That you're let me sending out messages that you wanted. To people kill are yourself. concerned about me. No, I do not want to kill myself. Okay. I'm losing my house in February, which I told my sister, okay. I'm losing my house in February. I said, can you help me out? She said, well, can you send me a picture of yourself? Well, I don't know how that's going to go because I have a beard and I don't look white. And I've had individuals in my past when I was a minor decide to me, you don't belong in this country because you're not white. But I'm not white. I'm not Hispanic. And yet, because I look that way, nobody wants to help me. So, okay. do I feel like I want to end myself? No. Never. But do I want help? Yeah. I want assistance to move to somewhere else. Sure. But nobody wants to help me because I look Hispanic. But I'm not Hispanic. And I've had people walking up and down my street telling me, you don't belong in this country because you're not Hispanic. Well, I tried to join the military when I was 18. Do you have anybody that comes over and checks on you or anything like that? <laughs> you think that fucking matters? Do you really think that fucking matters? I'm That's just nice. asking you. And let, let, me, let, me, let me break this down for you. In the state of Minnesota, do you really think that matters? What do you mean? <laughs> Jesus Christ. I have a social worker. Okay. It tells me I burnt bridges with um, places like um, SCI. 
I have PTSD. I have a traumatic brain injury. You ever been beaten in the head with a shotgun? You ever been had people taking your life from you? You ever had that? You ever had to go to that? No, I'm just that. asking you. Have you personally, as a police officer, have you ever had that happen, happen to you growing up? No, it's not. No. It's not. It's not happening. So, Josh, are there people that come over? Let me let me let me explain this. Right. Are let me explain this to you. I'm not a Karen. I'm not hey. a Ken. I, I respectfully that. talk to individuals, and I try to, on a occasion, respectfully talk to people. Okay. I went shopping at your Walmart here in Randall Falls. In 2019, it was Thanksgiving night, 2019. I have a perfect memory. I have a perfect re recollection of memory. 2019, I'm shopping at your Walmart here in Randall, and I bought small items. They were all in bags. Okay. And I get stopped at your door. And these individuals tell me I have to show my receipt. And I, I know from, from previous experience that I don't have to show my receipt because they're all small bags. And you busted my door. And no recollection whatsoever. I'm sorry, but I... <laughs> I'll go do that in a minute. So... So I went shopping. No, 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 no. I, I want. I want to. I want to go no, to but, this. I want to go to this. I want. I want. I want to go to this because I'm. I'm. I'm going to record this. I want to go. I want to go to this. I want to go to this. I want to go. Is there something that the police department can help you with today, Josh? Or do you just want to talk about? You busted my door. You bust. Do right. my door because you have because, a preclaration right. of some sort of situation which you have no evidence to whatsoever. That, and that's that's not true. Um, <laughs> the reason why we came in here is because we were being told that you, you want to help me. Your toes you, and hanging no, yourself. Is no. You want to can... if you want to help me. Right. I have to live on a specific s such amount of income every right. month, and I go shopping at this Walmart, and I go shopping at this Walmart, and. In 2019, Thanksgiving, t 2019, they stopped me at the door. They held me up against my will, and they told me I have to show my receipt. But then later on, I go to uh, uh, specific situations, and they said, you don't have to show your receipt because you bought small items. And one thing led to another. They actually paid me for the damages that they <laughs> that the situation occurred. <laughs> That everything happened to all, all my stuff that damaged because of the situation. Okay. But now I can't even go shopping at this Walmart because in 2020, when the you guys aren't even wearing masks. Okay. Mm -hmm. Jesus Christ. You guys aren't wearing masks. Um, 2020, and I know you guys are Trumpism supporters and hey, whatever, Josh, but. Josh, uh, I'm going to put my mask on, okay? First things first. I was the one talking to Amanda on the phone, okay? Is that your sister? In 2020, I go shopping at your Walmart. Mike, are you good? Yeah, in 2020, I go shopping at your Walmart. Josh. 2020, I go shopping at your Walmart. And they're physically stopping everybody at the door. Okay, I get that. So I, I said, what are you guys doing? Why are you, why are you doing this? Oh, we're allowed to do this. We're stopping everybody at the door. I said, why are you doing that? Because it's her job. I said, it's your job. Hold on. 2019, when this happened and Thanksgiving night, you guys told me it violated your ethics and your policy. But you're stopping everyone at the door. I said, in 2020, you got the virus. 3,000 people are... 3,000 people are dead every day because of this virus. I don't... 3,000 people are gone because of this virus every day. I know you don't like and, cops particularly too much. Would you like talking to the ambulance crew? Maybe they'd be uh, no, willing to help you out a little bit. No, I would like to to get this information out there. 3,000 people are dead every day because of this virus. Yeah. yeah. Six feet apart really doesn't so, do a lot. Um, I'm, just, I'm standing away from the pointy I, 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 I would like to, to talk to this individual. Yeah, sure. So 3,000 people are gone every day. So I went to Walmart, and they were stopping... Um, mm -hmm. They have the exit, the um, the self release exit, the, the self checkout exit. Yep. Person blocking this way, and they have the table blocking this way, and they have the regular person blocking this way. I know you guys don't care. Josh, I care. But listen, they blocking everybody, and I said to them, I call, I, I called the store, 
I said, how can you guys do this? I said, is this, is this really responsible? This is our job. This is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So I contacted the 1-800 number, the 1-800 Walmart. And I said, this is, um, this is irresponsible with everything going on. Can you please, guy, can you, <laughs> can you talk with them? And they said, we're not supposed to be doing it. We're not supposed to be stopping every individual for a, a, a volunteer receipt checkout. So I, I I waited on that two days later. I got a co I contacted the store manager. I spoke to uh, Lori, and she said to me, she said, we are stopping everybody at the door. I said, well, that's yeah. impossible. I said, you guys can't do that. I said, because that violates, that violates not only policy, but the ethics and everything that's going on. The Attorney General's office told me that I should contact OSHA. So I contacted OSHA, and OSHA said, we don't normally contact the source specifically for these okay. violations, but if you want us to, we'll contact them. Okay. I know you guys don't. Josh, okay, I'm listening. Josh, let me ask you something. Though. How can I help you today? You want to know how I can help? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> you, really, you really care? You really give a crap about it's, me? It's my job to give a crap, Josh. You don't. You really don't. Because let me, let me explain this to you. Yep. I've been kicked out of Walmart. The only place that I can afford. I'm on a... And you're stepping there, and even with the face mask, you're okay. still. Well, let's. And this is, Josh, you got a small kitchen, man. There's not a lot I can. Yeah, I don't. I'm not it's not about my people. perspective, though. You know, having a having an intellectual advantage, I can go through this days on end. But you don't care. Sure. You only care about the one thing. You only care about treating me like I don't exist, like I don't matter, like sure. like I'm I'm some sort of insignificant piece of crap. I'm not saying that. Hey, Josh, I'm with the ambulance. You don't care about me. I do care. That's why I'm here. Really? I do. Really? That's why I'm here.